For the final AVP game review, we've saved the best for last. Today, we're going to take a look at AVP 2 for the PC. Really, this game is just polished. Everything about it just feels complete. There are really just so many little details found all throughout the game that really show that the developers actually put quite a bit of effort into this game. The game is called AVP2 rather than just AVP for the 99th time. It seems that the developers actually were able to use one more number than just one! Here's the campaign screen. You don't see just simple text. You actually have the characters right there. And they aren't stills either. Rather, they are actually animated. The brain has this little target to come down over his eye. The predator activates his trademark laser pointer. And the alien extrudes his second mouth. What's more, the mission selection screen actually represents its respective faction. But here's another thing. Each mission actually has a fairly creative name to it as well. And that's not all. Even the loading screens are given a creative touch. Here for the Marine, it's a pulse rifle that actually has a working ammo counter. For the Predator, it's a wrist blade with a little shiny thing moving up. And for the Alien, it's a moving tail! You know your game is good when even the loading screen is awesome! With AVP2, you basically almost get three different games. All the campaigns play significantly different from one another. So instead of looking at the gameplay as a whole, we are instead going to take a look at each campaign individually. The first will be the Marine. Now this campaign is really your basic FPS. You run around and kill things, open doors, and accomplish various objectives. But unlike other FPSs, the enemies in this game are not just obstacles in your way. Rather, they are all legitimate threats. The Xenomorphs don't just rush and attack, rather they actually sneak up and then attack you. They actually have a variety of attacks outside of their simple claw swipe. You see, they also have access to their little stinger tail, which can temporarily immobilize you, which then lets them slice you to pieces. And like in the movies, killing a xenomorph is fairly difficult. Even when you do kill one, there is a significant chance you will still take damage because of their bloody acid blood spray. This this game is fairly dark, but it's not really that much of a hindrance. Really, it just adds to the atmosphere. And really, the darkness itself is not that dark. Even without the shoulder lamp and a flare, you can still see. The shoulder lamp does work fairly well, and it does provide a reasonable amount of illumination. Although, I must say that in real life, the illumination would probably be far greater. The flares are also fairly decent, but really, I never use them all that often. The one thing this campaign does well is it's able to create a really scary atmosphere. Just like in Aliens. You see, when you first start the game, you don't actually fight anything. There are really no enemies whatsoever. You do see people getting killed, but you yourself do not actually get attacked until you activate the security system. And when you are first attacked, it is much more exciting than normal. Really, this game does a good job in recapturing the suspense from aliens. And really, not having enemies for such a long stretch goes a long way towards immersing you into the game. You really get nervous every time you turn a corner. You expect something to be there, and there's nothing there. It just builds over time. In the game, you do have a wide variety of weapons, and they are all fairly decent, although I found myself primarily using just four or so. The shotgun. This weapon will take down most enemies in a single shot. The only problem is, when using it on a Xeno, it will usually cause some blood to get on you. And then you have the pulse rifle, and it works fairly well on a wide variety of enemies, but it does take several shots to actually take anything down. And the underslung grenade launcher works really well for the harder to kill enemies. You do get a dedicated grenade launcher, but I barely used it. Really, for most of the game, it's going to be a close quarters battle. So really, it's just not all that practical. You then have the flamethrower. 
This is a great weapon for very small enemies like facehuggers. Of all the enemies you face, the facehugger is the most deadly, as it is for all intents and purposes an insta-kill. They are very hard to hit with anything but the flamethrower. The flamethrower is also good for taking down chest bursters. And that does lead into something else. Like I said about atmosphere, later in the game you'll actually find some cocooned people. And since the game is fairly dark, when you actually hear somebody like writhing in pain and then hearing a little chunk of a bloody chest burster coming out, oh yeah, that even scared me. But really, as the chest bursters are not that difficult to kill, they're just very hard to hit and are more of an annoyance more than anything else. And finally, there is the smart gun. This weapon is good for picking off unseen enemies. Since the game is, as I have said, dark, and the xenomorphs are black, they are hard to see from a long distance. And in all reality, this is mainly the gun you're going to be using to take down enemies at a distance. Now you do get a number of other weapons, but they're just not really all that useful. You have a rocket launcher, which I used maybe once. You then have a sniper rifle, and I really have to ask, what's the point of a sniper rifle in a game where all you're fighting is close quarters? I have played this game I don't know how many times, and I have never ever had a need for a sniper rifle. In addition to all of your weapons, you also get a variety of tools. An iPad that you use to hack various things, it is more useful than you might think, as you can find weapons and ammo in lockers that are actually locked. You also get a blowtorch like the one seen in Aliens, and this device also sees more use outside of just little plot points, as some ammo boxes are actually locked as well. Overall, the Marine campaign is not the best. It is actually balanced with all the others. It doesn't stand out above the others, and it's really more of an equal more than anything else. The Predator campaign's major difference from the Marine campaign is the fact that you're not nearly as weak as one of those little humans. Rather, as a Predator, you just sort of steamroll all your competition. But it's not quite that easy. The campaign is still fairly difficult, even though you're basically the Predator equivalent of an old-style big game hunter. This Predator may be tough by human standards, but I think by predator standards he's one of those wimpy hunters, because not only does he have a massive number of gadgets, a portable fusion reactor that gives him unlimited recharges for his energy-based weapons, but also he has a portable med kit that is constantly filled up by the previously mentioned fusion reactor, but really to make matters even worse, he has guys out in the field give him weapons. Now that's not really sporting, is it? One of the big problems with the Predator campaign is the fact that it seems that our Predator just cheaped out on all of his weapons but maybe two. The cloaking device, while not a weapon, still seems like it was purchased at a Walmart, as just about every single foot soldier can spot you from a mile away. Now there are two weapons that I think are actually pretty good. You've got the combi stick and the spear gun. With the combi stick you can wipe out a whole squad fairly easily. And with the spear gun you can snipe distant enemies, and you can take out quite a few bad guys in fairly short order. But really, everything else just does not work all that well. The Busey Bifurcating Smart Disc works okay, but chaining kills is more trouble than it's really worth. The Plasma Caster is very disappointing, as you often have to hit enemies multiple times to kill them. Of all the weapons in the Predator's arsenal, the net gun has got to be the most disappointing. Remember how in Predator 2, how the net gun cut this guy into little chunks? Well, that's not what happens here. Rather, the nets appear to be only minor inconveniences. In fact, after a short time, whoever you shoot just escapes. Next, we have the Predator Pistol. It doesn't do a lot of damage, and it's just not necessary. Once again, I never found myself using it, but maybe three or four times. And next, our final weapon is this Throne Bomb. I really fail to see the point, as they are just not that useful. They don't really work as grenades, and really the only time I ever used them was to take out maybe one or two sentry guns. The Predator campaign, like the Marine campaign, is able to capture the feeling of the Predator films. And just as a matter of personal preference, I happen to like this campaign a lot more than the other two. And now, 
we have the Alien Campaign. And of all the campaigns, I have to say that this one is slightly more immersive than the previous two. Because you don't start out as a typical Xenomorph drone. Rather, you start out as a face hugger. And that really does add more dimension to the Yeti Alien campaign. For this level, you have to sneak around and you can't actually get spotted, because if you do, you get killed like in a second, until you can find a lone human. After you face hug this guy, you literally chest burst out of him. You control the chest burster as he bites his way out of a human being. That has got to be one of the most awesome moments in gaming. After you vacate this guy's body, you then engage in the most annoying part of the game. Essentially, this is a stealth mission, but it is very hard to be stealthy as there is very little cover. After the burster stage, you get into the game proper as a standard Xeno drone. And like with the previous two, you are fully immersed into the world of the Xeno. Just look at this scene. Is that you, Stone? Gameplay is fairly varied. You mainly need to sneak around, but really, I just found myself slaughtering people because health is fairly plentiful as you get it from actually eating the people that you kill. Which is not exactly accurate in terms of canon, as aliens are not supposed to eat. They're supposed to be powered by their acid blood. But, if that was the case, this game would be very, very, very difficult, verging on cheap. Overall, the Alien campaign is fairly straightforward. You mainly just go around killing things. But, it's still able to capture the feel of the Alien character. Gameplay in AVP2 never gets monotonous, as it is varied here and there. Towards the halfway point in the Marine campaign, you have to actually fight humans. And let's face it, we have all wondered just what a pulse rifle would do against another human. And later in the game, you also get to control an exosuit. Not one of those lousy commercial ones, but rather a military one. You basically have two arms full of weapons. You have one with a laser gun and a flamethrower, and on the other, you have a Gatling gun and a rocket launcher. And you also get to use it against a couple of humanoid characters as well. Can't we all just get along? The Predator also has a little bit of variety in it as well, as you get captured by the same humans that are trying to kill the Marine character. This has got to be the hardest level in the Predator campaign, as you only have your wrist blades and initial health. This portion of the game does verge on cheap, because you cannot pick up any health until you finally find your little medical computer. Unfortunately, avp 2 story is not a very good video game story. Rather, it transcends the typical tropes of a video game story and becomes something else entirely. The big problem with video game stories is the fact that they are so bloody contrived. Like say in Batman Arkham Asylum. In that game, the reason why there's so many thugs in Arkham Asylum is because they just decided to move hundreds of prisoners from a real prison to a psychiatric hospital. See, that doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? All that does is give a convenient reason as to why there's hundreds of thugs for Batman to beat up. In AVP 2, everything makes a bit of sense. The story presented here is what I'd like to call book quality. And that's because there is much more going on than just what the main character sees. There's all kinds of little behind-the-scenes things happening that have shaped what has happened in the game. If ever you wanted a good AVP film, just play the game and pretend that the old graphics are just bad CGI. Now, all three campaigns are actually complementary to one another. What happens is, each campaign affects the other. For example, in the Marine campaign, as you escape the corporate soldiers, you let the Predator out. Now, unlike in my other videos, I am not actually going to spoil the story. It would take nine years for there to be a sequel. But wait. I don't see a three anywhere on here. Clearly this is not the first one, because right here we've got the second one. So what's the deal? I know for a fact it is not the 360th, because, hell, not even I could miss that many games. So what's the deal? You know what? They 
did it again. They released another bloody sequel, but they forgot to put a bloody 3 on it. Why? Why do they have all the games have the same name? What's the point? How hard would it have been to put a little 3 here? There is nothing here that has not been seen numerous times before. And this game is not only inferior to AVP2, it's also inferior to AVP1. On the PC, that is. The story is bottom of the barrel basic, and has nowhere near the level of complexity of AVP2. Now, one may think that after waiting nine years, my expectations were far too high. Well, since it took nine years, I just thought that the game would actually be greater than or equal to the preceding one, of which it was not. Really, shouldn't things get better as time goes on? Not worse? I definitely recommend getting this game. Get over the fact that the graphics aren't in HD or whatever, because really, you can still have crap and have it be in HD. So this is General Oz, wishing you good AVP2, or whatever makes you happy.